Hello everyone, welcome to Big Data Thoughts. Today we would be looking at a very interesting concept in Spark which has helped immensely in improving the performance of our queries and the way Spark executes and operates today and that is dynamic partition pruning. So we would look at what is dynamic partition pruning, how does it help and how does Spark actually incorporate that when our execution happens. So let's get started. Okay, so let's start from understanding what is pruning. So pruning is when the optimizer understands what data to read and more specifically what data not to read. This is called pruning. Let's understand this in a bit more detail with some example. So first of all, let us look at what is filter pushdown because this will help us to understand what is pruning and how does Spark do it. So let's say there is a query, a very simple query, which is like select star from customer table where city name is Delhi. Now, how would that operate if we are talking about a very basic data flow? In a normal scenario, what would happen is the first operation that would happen is a scan. So the whole table, the customer table would be scanned and then there would be a filter applied, which is city name equal to Delhi. But if we look at this basic data flow, it is not going to be performance if, uh, efficient or it is not going to be good because even though we are interested only in a handful of record, we are actually scanning that entire table and the table may be really, really huge. So this is not really the right way to uh, execute a query or create that plan of execution for the query. So a better way that was introduced in many of the uh, databases including and even in Spark we have this concept of filter pushdown which is very simple which means that I would read only what I need. So I would just reverse the order. First there would be a filter performed because it will just filter the records which are pertaining to city name Delhi and then there is a scan. So by just reversing this order we are improving the performance by many folds. And this is called filter pushdown because as we can see the filter is pushed down to the lowest level first to reduce the data set. Because when we talk about Spark, it is a distributed architecture in which Spark is working. So the costliest operation and I have told this in many times in multiple videos about Spark, the costliest operation is the shuffle, the data shuffling from one node to another because we are talking about huge amount of data. If we have to prevent that shuffle, the easiest way or the best way to do it is to reduce the data on which we are operating. So this filter pushdown is a very, very good and easy way to achieve that. Now, when, now we understand what is filter pushdown, what is pruning. So let's look at static partition pruning because even before we go to dynamic partition pruning to understand the beauty of dynamic partition pruning, we need to understand what is static partition pruning and what are the disadvantages. Why should we go for dynamic one? And why does Spark use a dynamic partition pruning? So partition pruning, as I said, is what I just explained about filter pushdown. So partition pruning means what we are trying to do. We are pruning the data or we are reading only what is required. The only additional thing here when we talk about partition uh, pruning is that the data set here is actually partition. The data set on which I'm operating is partition. So it makes it all the more efficient because now I don't have to even fill to put that filter. I don't have to look at a lot of data. I know I can look at a specific partition. If I partition by city name, it is all the more easier to get to that partition, put a filter. I mean, that filter is applied using that partition and then there, there is a scan. Now, let us look at an example of why static partition pruning may not be suitable in all cases. So let's just make this query a bit more uh, complex than it was and we introduce a join here. So we say select star from customer, but now I am not having that city name in my customer table. So I'm joining with another table called city and then I'm doing a where clause of city name equal to Delhi. So essentially what is happening is Typically, these kind of scenarios will come when we have dimension and facts, fact tables. The dimension table is much more smaller than the fact table. 
but the irony here is that the filter push down or the static pruning is happening on the dimension table because the wear closet is on the city name on the city table which is the dimension table so essentially we are not able to get the benefit of partition pruning because the dimension data is very very small even though we have a filter push down even though we have um, that filter executed and a small set of data still we are going to join and scan first scan that whole fact table and then perform a join so this will result in a huge scan and a lot of shuffling of data so here our static pruning is not going to work because most of the cases in joins and all you would see wherever there is a where clause which is on a smaller table this kind of a partition pruning which is static will not work so how do we remediate that now let us look at this example of dynamic pruning what does dynamic pruning now mean so we looked at the problem where we were filtering on the smaller data set and then doing a scan and join with a bigger data set so instead of that what spark does and you would see it in spark 3 and 3.3 .3, they have enhanced on this and they are using dynamic pruning to optimize the way our queries are working so what will happen in dynamic pruning is there is still the query is the same we are doing a select star on customer joining it with a city table and we have a where clause on city name delhi so on the dimension side we do a filter push down when i say we spark is doing that filter push down the filter picks up a smaller subset of data but now even before we go and scan the dimension table or we do a join we are pushing this filter to the fact table creating a sub query so what we are trying to do we are trying to create a sub query applied to the fact table to filter the data in fact table and then do the scan so there is no direct filter push down on the fact table possible but we are remediating it by doing a filter on the dimension and then creating a sub query and applying to the fact table even before we scan and join so this will achieve the same thing that we were trying to do with static partition pruning but on the smaller table so this is what is known as dynamic partition pruning where although your where clause is on the smaller data set but after doing that you are creating a sub query and applying it on the larger table this is the concept of dynamic pruning we are dynamically creating or pruning the bigger table now let us look at how spark is introducing this particular dynamic partition pruning so to do that let us look at the whole flow of how a spark query or an api or gets executed so the first step in any spark execution is creation of the logical plan so that logical plan is basically rule based and this is the place where your partition pr pruning folding all of that is done and a logical plan is created which is an optimized one this is you all uh, based on a rule based transformation so there are rules that are there in spark which decide how do we want to create the logical plan after the logical plan is created when we go to the physical plan selection that is where we do a stats based or a cost based model to create the physical plan and thereafter the rdd batches are created which are executed on different executors and cluster slots so this is simplistically put the way spark executes now if we have to look at how spark is introducing dynamic partition pruning or where is it introducing it so what spark does is spark is introducing that dynamic uh, uh, partition pruning at the logical plan level so essentially if we look at it right let us take an example of how this optimization spark is achieving so if we have let's say dimension table the dimension table let's assume is not partitioned okay and we have a very big fact table and that is partitioned so these different colors are kind of different partitions that are done on the fact table okay now what we are trying to achieve we are trying to do a filter on the dim table like the example i gave about customer table and city table but out of that if we see out of the whole all of these partitions only two partitions these two partitions are the ones that i want to 
pick up from the dimension table based on the filter that I have put. The city name equal to Delhi was our filter and that is the data I want to partition uh, or pick up from the fact table also, right? So this part of the query which is doing a filter on the dimension table is easier because the data is smaller, we do a simple filter push down. So instead of doing a scan and a filter, I will reverse the order and do a filter and then scan. And that is the data that I'm interested in to pick up even from the fact table. So I do not want to read all of these partitions, but I want to read only these two partitions from the fact table. So this is the optimization that I'm interested in. <clears throat> but how does Spark do it? So how does Spark do it is, there are two ways. One is that first of all, it will do a filter and a scan on the smaller table, it, which is, let's say, non-partition, the dimension table, the data is small, but it will get that filtered records and create a sub-query which will be applied on this partitioned data, which is huge, the fact table. So this filtered data will be forming as a sub-query here to filter the uh, dimension of the facts table <clears throat> and then if you see this part which is highlighted in red is actually the filter and scan that we did on the dim table which is now a sub query that is applied before scanning the fact table. So this is one way to achieve uh, the optimization that we are looking for or the dynamic partition pruning but doing this sub query may not be that efficient when uh, there can be some work duplication here which is expensive because first we are writing a query here filtering then again executing that as a sub query so an uh, even better way of doing this is to do a broadcast hash join and this is what spark would use if our data set or the dimension table or this table is very small then the best way to do is a broadcast hash join so what we will do is we will filter and scan the dim uh, table and then we will do a broadcast hash join, which means this whole of this data set, which is small, will be broadcasted to each of the executor nodes uh, so that the data is available locally to each of the executors and they can operate on the data to avoid shuffles. This is even more efficient than the subquery method. And this is what Spark tries to do when we talk about dynamic partition pruning. So it is just doing the <coughs> filter on the dim table and then instead of a subquery it is doing broadcasting the data set to each of the nodes so that the scan can happen after the filter. So this is how dynamic partition pruning works in Spark. I hope this helps to understand internally how that dynamic partition pruning is working and how it is optimizing the queries so that they are very very performance efficient. So. I hope this video helps in understanding the concept. Please uh, like, share and subscribe to the channel and keep watching the videos. Thank you.